hey guys what's up so i hope you have enjoyed the video till now on disaster management series please watch part 1.1 to 1.3 before you come here to watch 1.4 all these videos are awesome and one question either directly or indirectly is guaranteed in prelims as well as in mains and most likely in interview also this is the youtube channel an academy do subscribe and this is the 1.4 part presented by me so if you have any doubt or any query you can please please comment below the video on the youtube or on the facebook page i'll be more than happy to address them there and do spread the word of this education revolution it will help lots and lots of people come into this so we'll start with something called as very very important extremely extremely crucial for disaster management is geographic information system so it is not just gps it is not geographic positioning system it is much 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 more beyond than what is it these are computer systems and these are concepts and these are systems systems is not your system that is cpu systems means an institution something like that and it comprise of hardware software data and personnels then it is used to efficiently capture store update that uh, the data should not remain redundant after times like many websites are manipulate that is to change it and to disseminate or to select whichever the portion is relevant and finally display it in all forms of geographically as well as spatially this is not spatial this is spatial spatial means over space referenced information so this is the definition of gis so as you can see in this particular scene uh, so these are the various uh, scenarios where the land is mapped here here and these are the various mapping has been done and which portion is more critical or which portion is the green and all so they are classified into various zones so this is how gis uh, is constructed then you have phase wise gis role in disaster management or emergency management there are various phases which uphold which unfold in time to come phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 we will tell you so gis played an extremely important role and reduced the death toll as well as the disaster toll especially in uttarkashi cloudburst flash flood and gis based solution as i have already told you there are in total four phases and using the above example of uttarkashi i will shed some light on it so first is the mitigation phase as i have already told you it decreases the impact or damages so most losses happened because they were residing in river bed area in case of uttarkashi so better land use planning could have been done uske liye kya zarurat hai you need r and d and you need to formulate building codes and then it can be done through gis to identify the safe places for residential purposes extremely extremely important then you have the second phase called as preparedness phase what what do you mean by preparedness phase so this phase plays a significant role in the preparedness phase obviously gis plays a significant role in the preparedness phase then to combat events like uttarkashi flood or tsunami or earthquake or whatever obviously agar pehle hi pata chal jaye they are about to happen if you know in advance they are about to happen you need to have better warning systems like gis based public information systems etc which can be developed and they are needed to be developed there is no other way out then finally gis based decision support system can be developed what happens is you need to do something called as resource pooling so you know all the resources in real time so if you know these two then you know where to disseminate them and which portion needs it more so then you can disseminate it accordingly then the third phase is the response phase so obviously gis and remote sensing can be used to play a very significant role uh, if the roads are blocked if there is no transportation you can also look for airways also if you have good satellite imagery and road blockades are especially common landslides and they are common again in cloudburst conditions then real time satellite images or the latest images from isro agencies or uh, from which alternate routes of roads can be find out or from hills it can be find out where soldiers can go on foot or where someone is trapped then airway can be considered for quick relief if alternate route is not available then you have search and rescue teams search and rescue teams can do better planning using gis maps and map database and they can do better sharing of the information using web based gis applications so these are the three features in the response phase and finally you have the recovery phase or the fourth phase so what do we do in this is we do the detailed damage ass assessment again it will be needing help of gis you can clean various debris using it 
then you can use safe reconstruction sites you know in the previous disaster the sites uh, have been destroyed because they were not located on a safe parameter so for future reconstruction you need to do an evaluation or mapping of safe reconstruction site then uh, you need to do some spatial planning which can help to reduce the exposures as well as lessen the magnitude of flash flood hazards then you can have some participatory approaches again i am telling you the local people and the local disaster management is the key the most important resource they have to play the most important role and they need to be aware of flash flood risk and all those so that increases the efficiency of such management so these are the four phases of gis ab itna aapne pad liya itna aapko kuch yaad to rehne wala nahi hai it's impossible to remember all these things so always i make a table if you can make such tables in the answers you'll get good marks so this is the gis emergency disaster management these are the four phases mitigation how does it help risk mapping hazard management r and d preparedness emergency planning warning system public information response resource mapping deployment search and rescue and recovery damage assessment debris cleaning and reconstruction so if you uh, make it like this the entire information is condensed in these 12 points and it includes more or less whatever we have talked about in the previous slides so if you can write something like that it will be very beneficial then you have something called as prevention and mitigation of disasters so disaster again these terms are repetitive so please bear with me prevention mitigation and preparedness are always better than response because it helps in uh, reaching vulnerability reduction goals so only you just remember you do disaster risk reduction can be done if it is combined with sustainable development so you need to have mitigation built into the development process this is the 10th five year plan line and then you also have national disaster mitigation fund for prevention and mitigation of disasters so let's start with first with earthquake so for earthquake india is divided into five seismic zones everyone knows where the maximum intensity of earthquake is expected like zone 5 is the most vulnerable portion most active also the whole of northeast then new delhi some portion of bihar west bengal western up hills himachal pradesh and andaman nicobar islands they are very high risk so rate of urbanization in india has been increasing many cities including our national capital is located in zones of high seismic risk plus the majority of constructions are not earthquake resistant obviously so if earthquake comes these buildings will collapse and it becomes very very difficult to manage the disaster then the regulatory mechanisms are weak and thus any earthquake which strikes in one of these cities can turn into major disaster and we have seen six such disasters in last 15 odd years in major cities of india then you have national earthquake risk mitigation project just inke naam naam yaad kar lo and if you remember somehow then you can use it in the specific question in geography or writing an essay or wherever you want then national building code needs to be developed for what building needs to come they should have resilience towards earthquake then building materials and technology promotion council which helps in refitting or retrofitting of lifeline structures then you have ministry of panchayati raj which under brgf that is backward regions grant fund and it can be used to meet critical infrastructural gaps it is given to states like chatisgarh and uh, jharkhand etc then second is the cyclones for cyclones basically you have two things one is the national cyclone risk mitigation project ncrmp i know the words are boring plus just bear with me and try to remember as much as you can and then you have it's very logical national means indian cyclone means cyclone risk means risk mitigation means decreasing projects so ncr then you have integrated coastal zone management project so ncrp is active in andhra pradesh and odisha what does it do it upgrade cyclone forecasting tracking warning system build capacity these are the very common then construct major infrastructure including multi purpose cyclone shelters and embankments and active in andhra pradesh and odisha then what are the key features obviously community mobilization again the most important portion training then you need to have cyclone shelters etc then construction as well as repair of embankments which decreases the impact of cyclones then you need to have technical assistance on disaster risk management and finally you need to have capacity building and knowledge creation moving forward for landslides we have national landslide risk mitigation project like national cyclone risk mitigation project replace it with landslide then for railways roads and civil aviation there are different safety measures i cannot go in the detail it is just too much a detail just remember the basic points for epidemic mitigation you have ministry of health and family welfare 
then for droughts you have two programs drought prone area program and desert development program what these focus is on water resource management again very very critical when you have lack of water then only drought occurs then food security is becomes extremely important then you have contingency crop planning what if one type of crop cannot be planted then you need to have some contingency plan and finally you need to give relief employment so that people are not in distress then there are fire hazard and risk analysis of fire services for fire and finally for tsunamis the single most important thing is shoreline tree cover because it is cost effective it is long lasting and it is better than artificial barriers so one example which i'll give is the nalu vidapadi village in tamil nadu sorry for the pronunciation it showed very less mortality in 2004 tsunami because it has long coastline of trees so uh, the shoreline tree cover is the best hedge against tsunami similarly mangroves which are already present provides a good hedge against tsunami and let's not destroy them so these are the nodal agencies which are responsible for disaster management in india so for cyclone we have the indian meteorological department then again for heat and cold waves we have the indian meteorological department so they are basically responsible for forecasting and other data then tsunami the total forecasting is done by indian national center for oceanic information services for floods you have flood forecasting you have rain forecasting etc by central water commission for landslides you have gsi geological survey of india and for avalanches what is avalanche when snow falls from the mountain it leads to snowballing effect where it becomes large and large and it takes a form of almost huge tons and tons of snow along with mud can fall so this leads uh, this is taken care by snow and avalanche study establishment then for funding you have the national disaster response fund how does the money comes in it by leaving the national calamity contingency duty and it is done on imported petrol and lots and lots of other items then you have environmental relief fund then you have disaster response reserve capacity building grant and then various national schemes are there and international funds from united states aid and undp us aid and undp united nation development program then there is lots and lots of international cooperation starting with us aid and undp we have sark disaster management center in new delhi then you have unisdr if you can remember one of or two or three or names then your purpose is more than served for united nations you have international strategy for disaster reduction then you have disaster management team you have disaster assessment and coordination and finally you have international search and rescue advisory group so these are the international bodies for cooperation then again you have global facility for disaster risk reduction in our local forum we have asian region forum which deals with disaster management then us aids peer program pwr program for enhancement of emergency response by fir se bol raha hu you don't need to remember each and every one of them even if you remember two to three your purpose is served then you have asian disaster reduction center and then various bilateral treaty like india swiss disaster treaty india russia disaster treaty then you have trilateral like india russia and china disaster treaty and then you have various multilateral agreements finally the most important being is the yogo framework of action yogo it was uh, signed in 2005 in kobe japan and it deals with working globally towards sustainable reduction of disaster losses in lives as well as in assets that is only two things right lives and property and assets here can be social economic and environmental so then it has huge then it has three strategic goals most of the programs of international arena have strategic goals focus areas and then how to achieve those goals so it has this this remember this drr plus sd if it is done that is integration of disaster risk reduction into sustainable development then it will lead to disaster prevention mitigation preparedness and vulnerability reduction please remember these are very very keywords you can use them anywhere then you have the development and strengthening of institutions mechanisms and capacities at all levels and in particular at the community level that can systematically contribute to building resilience to hazards then you have systematic incorporation of risk reduction approaches into design etc etc and then finally the reconstruction of the affected communities you just need to have an idea so that you know how these strategic goals are written then you have five priority action areas then you need to make it a national and a local priority then you need to have enhance early warning you need knowledge innovation and education to build a culture of safety these are keywords 
if you use them you'll get good marks if you don't use them you'll get bad marks as simple as that nothing more nothing less then you need to have the reduce the underlying risk factors then strengthening the disaster preparedness then the final slide for today is the key focus area for disaster management is promote socio-economic development practices then have good land use planning like Uttar Kashi don't allow people to live in riverbed etc then strengthening of institutional and technical capacities review and implement preparedness and contingency plans promote voluntarism and community participation and then obviously you need to have lots and lots of emergency funds you need lots and lots of volunteers because manpower is not always sufficient to deal with the huge calamities like tsunami etc then you need to have exchange of information through dialogue deliberation discourse coordination between what disaster managers and development sectors so i hope you enjoyed this video so the series ends here now just tell me if you want dpsp or reading comprehension which you, whichever you want or the third option is any new series i will not make other video right now just these three options you have just let me know in the comments whichever votes the most will be there like last time most people voted for the 1.4 dm that is why i made this video so don't think that some other someone else will do because otherwise there will be nothing so thanks for watching the video still if you have any doubt you can let me know this is the twitter handle at romanceni please 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 spread the word and help those who cannot afford coaching this is the sole reason why i am doing this thank you for watching the video have an awesome day